Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. We are proud to present Jorn Lutas. He is the architect, I'm sorry, security architect with Solfas. All right, thank Please you so much. Please give him a warm welcome. All right, let's not waste any time. I've got 15 minutes, so let's kick off. For the people that don't know Sophos, we have been around for slightly longer than 30 years, and throughout that entire time, we have focused on one thing and one thing alone, security. And we've actually been quite successful at that. Today, we have, I would say, one of the most comprehensive security portfolios of any security vendor around. We can protect you from your pocket all the way to the cloud with your desktop, your network edge, and anything in between. And we are truly one of the only companies that can say that they have a balanced mix between endpoint and network products. So regardless of where you are and what device you're using, we can protect you. And one of the things that we've been working on for the last couple of years is to get all of these products to use a single console that we have dubbed, quite creatively, Sophos Central. So this is your one place you go to where you set policies for all of our products in a single, easy to use, intuitive interface. And not just that, because that is cool in and of itself, but we also added cloud intelligence to crunch big data on our threats in that environment as well. So all of these products are now sharing similar definitions. And we didn't stop there. All of the products that you see in this diagram can communicate with each other and coordinate their defenses. So let's say that I have a, um, a machine that is running my encryption. It got compromised, and that compromise was picked up either by the antivirus or by the firewall. Now I have the ability to use a predetermined response to that. For example, let's immediately pull the encryption keys out of that device so that your data loss is mitigated. That's the power of having everything in a single console. Now, obviously, that's nice and all, but what does that mean to you on AWS? And I'm glad you asked, hypothetical person. Um, so we all know the shared security model, and we all know that Amazon expects us to bring security to our solutions when we move them to the cloud. And this is where we have lived for a long time. We are at that top layer of innovative security solutions that extend the, the functionalities that Amazon offers us. So this is where we've built award-winning products like our Sophos UTM onto the platform to help you uh, filter things in depth. And we've done that for a long time. We were actually one of the first security products on the AWS marketplace. Um, we were one of the first firewall vendors to uh, achieve the security competency. And we are consistently one of the top two selling solutions in the AWS marketplace when it comes to firewall solutions. So let's go into this in a bit more detail. The two main products that we currently have that focus solely on AWS are the Sophos UTM and Sophos Server Protection. Now, Sophos UTM is our all-in-one solution when it comes to firewalling, both on-premise and in the cloud. And it's got all of the next-generation firewalling items that you would expect, things like web application firewalling, IPS, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that sets us apart in this regard is that we can run all of these features in a single machine. So instead of having to deploy a point WAF solution and a point IPS solution, we have all of these available as features that you just enable in your existing firewalling solution. And not just that, because that would be powerful in and of itself. We also built in the ability to auto scale these solutions using platform services. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we looked at AWS and said, hey, that's cool. We can use auto scaling features. So we are using auto scaling in AWS. We're using CloudWatch for monitoring. We're using S3 for data uh, for configuration and data synchronization. And beyond that, we said, OK, that's really neat. So we have a single instance firewall with everything that you need. We can scale it up to multiple firewalls if needed using auto scaling. How can we expand on that? And one of the things we did there is we looked at the platform and said, OK, 
cool, are there scaling firewalls? How can I leverage that outbound? And the answer to that question was, we can't. So that's where we stepped in and said, OK, we're going to make that happen. We developed what we call the outbound gateway, which allows you to not just leverage other scaling firewalls for an inbound scenario, but also for an outbound scenario. So this is absolutely fundamental if you have things like uh, a workspaces environment where a lot of people are trying to connect to the internet, and you cannot effectively guess how many machines you're going to have at any given time. That's where the Sophos UTM auto scaling with OGW comes in. And then on the workload security side of the house, we have, like I mentioned, our Sophos server protection. This is a truly next gen server protection solution that's lightweight, runs on your Windows and Linux instances, and comes with some really cool technologies like our CryptoGuard and some ransomware technology, malicious traffic detection, and one click application lockdown. Um, and one-click application whitelisting, sorry, that we call server lockdown. And again, we didn't just stop there. We didn't just bring a product. We actually made it aware of its environment. So what we did here is we integrated the uh, AWS environment into Central. So we can pull data from your AWS account into Central. So you can see which servers are part of which auto scaling group. You can see their status. You can see which machines are protected, which machines are unprotected, etc. Etc. And on top of that, obviously, we know people want to auto scale, so our licensing is also compatible with auto scaling through Software Central. Oh, and before I forget, um, we actually achieved, uh, we were actually pre qualified for the AWS Partner Competency Program for Software UTM recently, and uh, that's something that we're also quite proud of. So let's take a look at some of the common use cases that we see for our technology in the cloud. All of them are focused around expanding what Amazon already brings in terms of security features. So you'll see uh, things like adding IPS to that environment, things like adding more flexible VPN solutions, expanding the web application firewall, doing, like I mentioned, outbound web filtering, or actively adding anti-ransomware technology to your instances and your data that you are storing using our server protection endpoint. And Amazon loves us for that. They actually build the Amazon Quick Start for the web filtering, uh, for the outbound web filtering use case for us because they think we're doing a really great job. So I only have seven minutes left. I can't talk about all of the awesome use cases that we have. So let's focus in on the web application firewall and give you a bit of a feel what I mean with extending platform functionality. So we all know the Amazon AWS Web Application Firewall. It comes with some really nice, sophisticated filtering that will help you protect your environments from SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, service-level DOS attacks, which they recently introduced with the WAF Shield, and some reputation-based connection filtering. And those are great features. We said, cool, let's take those and expand upon that. So with RWAF, you get some additional features like having form hardening, cookie hardening, URL hardening in there. We do virtual patching. But on top of that, we also do things that are more uh, focused on the data aspect of protecting the WAF. So you'll see things like being able to mime filter for particular file types to prevent data loss or enforce policies for people who want to upload things there. And more importantly, you'll also find the ability to do in-stream anti-malware scanning to anything that gets uploaded there. Or on the other side of the house, we can add authentication support to applications that do not support authentication themselves or extend them with things like multi-factor authentication. So enough talking. I'm going to try and demo some of that. So in the first demo, I'm going to uh, go and show you how we can extend the authentication that you currently might have on your applications using the WAF. So as you can see, I built a nice virtual web server. It's been configured uh, to send traffic to a particular set of backend servers. And we are applying security policies based on a path basis on those instances. So if we go to the client 
and we open the website. It's something that I came up with. It's uh, imaginary consultant company. Uh, imaginary consulting company, and as part of that, they have a support area. So if we click um, on the support link, it'll tell me that this is for customers only. So obviously, this is something that they would want to protect. And just having a, sim a single basic authentication pop up is not ideal. So we can log in. We can get to that site. But now let's add some security. So let's go back to the Sophos UTM and see how the WAF would help you enforce strong authentication there. So the first step that we want to do is go to our reverse authentication and make an authentication profile, this one that uses forms for authentication instead of basic authentication. Let's add some users there. And let's make sure that we actually do delegate authentication to the back end, because we're extending authentication, not replacing it. And while we're at it, let's also make sure that the people that want to log into this website actually need to use a token. So you can use either a smartphone app that we provide, or you can use any other OAuth-based uh, token solution with that. So that's what I did here. And my user, when he wants to log in, is going to have to authenticate because we added that checkbox there so that he, when he uses the WAF, he'll need to show us authentication. We'll apply it to the path that we have for our website. And we'll save that. And then when we go back to the client, you'll see that when I reload the web page, it's not just going to show me the publicly available section, because obviously I did it only on a path basis. It will, as soon as we open the protected area in our support, show us a form. And now we have a secure authentication without having to touch the backend application at all. So even if you're working with legacy applications and you want to enforce strong authentication for them, that's where the Sophos UTM WAF can truly help you extend that uh, application and provide additional security. But that's just one use case. The other use case that I personally really like, if the clicker works, is to do in-stream anti-malware. So in this case, I have set up another service, Pidio, for those of you who are uh, open source aware, which is basically a Dropbox alternative. And in this case, it is completely unprotected. I installed no antivirus on it or whatever. So I sign into my Pidio environment, and I'll actually show you that I can upload an iCar test file, and it gets accepted without any sort of security. And not just that, I can also download an iCar test file. And that, obviously, is something that you don't want. Because what's worse than having someone upload a virus to your server, it is them downloading it from you, because that is the sort of, uh, sort of stuff that makes you the next headline. So this is obviously not ideal. And we would want to prevent people from doing either. So while we walk through the demo, like I said, you'll see we can take an iCar file, and it will work perfectly fine. So let's move on from there and actually look at how we would want to protect that. So if we leave the demo client, go to a web application firewall, let's create a firewall profile that will filter for malware. And I actually created one that I've uh, creatively uh, <laughs> dubbed the uh, uh, more filter. And what you'll see here is that we will be filtering using a single engine. You can use two engines in the Sophos, but we're using a single one for this demo for speed. Um, and I'm going to filter both uploads and downloads. And I will be dropping any file that I cannot open due to encryption or due to some uh, attacker trying to be crafty and trying to work around this. So let's apply that to the virtual web server, hit Save, and let's go back to the client. Now, on the client, let's do the exact same thing I did just now. Let's try and download a virus. Nothing happened. And the next step, let's try and oh, I'm, I'm running ahead of myself. When I download, you'll see it's completely blocked. When I now try and upload a virus, like I did last time, you'll actually see that it will give you a very nice error for the client that will let them know that 
even though they're uploading an, an, a, fi a virus in a zip file, it will still tell them, wait, you're not allowed to do that. And if you go from here and you actually need forensic details to look into this later, there's full logging on the Sophos UTM built into the product that will actually tell you, OK, we recognize that someone was trying to upload something that was picked up by the anti-malware filter. And then a few lines below that, it will tell you exactly which signature it found in the stream. And sadly, that leaves me about 25 to 27 seconds over my time limit. So I'm going to have to skip the last demo of my deck. But I would like to invite you all to come over to our booth. It's 1707 on the expo floor. And before you leave, we have some awesome socks to give away. So thank you so much for joining us for this session.